the best protection against today's and future pandemics in the hands of your family is my topic today. First of all, let's see what are today's and future pandemics. Dr. Francis Carroll said, our invasion and destruction of the environment has brought two enormous consequences. One, global warming, and second, zoonotic diseases. Our preferences for food of animal origin has upset the ecological balance and nature is reacting. So, in order to have an idea, let's compare uh, the number, the toll of death between transmittable diseases and non-communicable diseases. In the first wave of COVID-19, between March and May 2020, more than 4,500 people used to die a day. In the second wave of COVID-19, uh, uh, by January 31st, more than 17,000 people died. Uh, one month later, this was dropped to 11,000. However, did you know that more than 26,000 people die today from cancer? Do you know that more than 41,000 people are dying today because of heart attack and stroke? This means that Almost 68,000 people die every day in the world just for heart attack, stroke and cancer, complications of circulatory diseases and cancer. In the future, by 2030, almost 55,000 will die from heart attack and stroke, while 45,000 will die because of cancer every day. That means 1,000 people dying per day in the world, every single day. What we have learned in this first part? First, pandemics will come and go as long as we continue to destroy our house, this house, this environment. And we learned that deadliest pandemics are circulatory diseases complication, heart attack and stroke and cancer. These non-communicable diseases are killing much more people than communicable diseases. However, media and sometimes health officials are not talking about this. How to protect from pandemics of today and of the future. Of course, external protective measures are important and every uh, transmittable disease uh, will have its own protective measures. However, I want to talk of something more important than simple external protection. The global response has been to treat COVID-19, says a literature review from Asia, Europe and America, as a vertical disease, rather than addressing the full ecosystem of our response to COVID-19, or its interaction with non-communicable diseases and poverty. So, everything we have done against COVID-19 we concentrated too much in them, in it, instead of thinking and addressing the full ecosystem, that means its interaction with non-communicable diseases and social determinants of health, like poverty and others. From where did COVID-19 get its toll of death? during this pandemic. From those who already had cancer, 
but more important, from those who already have cardiovascular diseases, or from those who already have circulatory diseases, risk factors. Hmm? That means being obese, being overweight, having high blood pressure, having diabetes. COVID-19 took advantage of those who already have these conditions. For instance, of those dead in Peru by COVID-19, more than 85% were obese, 43% were diabetic, and 22% had high blood pressure. What happened in UK and Italy? Same, 73.7% of the critical patients in the UK who were to the intensive care unit were overweight or obese. And 99% of those dead in Italy had pre-existing conditions such obesity, high blood pressure or diabetes. So this is the list of the common risk factors between non-communicable diseases, chronic diseases, and transmittable diseases like COVID-19 and others. Smoking, having high blood pressure, being obese or overweight, having diabetes, depressed immune system, and living in poor conditions, bad social conditions. How can you explain the in the US, 18% of the population are African American. However, more than 33% of those who pass away because of COVID-19 were African Americans. Poverty is one of the explanations. So, vulnerability toward pandemics or protection against pandemics. It depends on two things. One, on social responsibility. We need to provide, from our standpoint, from where we are, from where you are, you need to take social responsibility in your own sphere. Do whatever is in your hand to provide education, employment, work, housing, and food for people. Living in poverty is something that prepares for pandemics. Getting out from poverty is something that protects against pandemics. The other day, I met a couple who gave some money to a young people who wanted to study architecture in one of our universities. They began to support this young person. They began to change a life at a time. So we need from where we are to address social determinants of health. If you are a health authority or if you are a major or you are a businessman, don't forget to take your social responsibility. However, I'm going to focus in the other important point. Each one's responsibility. That's important. That means risk behaviors or protective behaviors are going to determine your vulnerability to pandemics or your protection against pandemics. I want to talk a little more about these common risk behaviors that prepare the way for communicable diseases or for non-communicable diseases. That means chronic disease. Smoking and drinking. Lack of regular physical activity. Excessive eating with animal derived, refined, sweet and salty food, fried food, junk food, 
this next factor is very important, risk behavior. Poor intake of what? Cereals, seeds and nuts, raw and cooked vegetables. Inability to control stress. What we have learned in this second part? I need to take my personal responsibility. Huh? How? A social responsibility, doing whatever I can, whatever is on my hand to help others to meet educational needs, work needs, housing needs, food needs, but also individual responsibility, changing, changing my lifestyle. That is why I want to present the best protection it is a healthy lifestyle. This is what The Lancet said governments should implement stricter controls on tobacco, alcohol and sugar, as well as invest specifically in improving physical activity and healthy eating. This is the eight habits to protect you and your family against pandemics of today and of the future. Practice physical activity according to your capacity. Walk six times per week for 35 to 45 minutes or aerobic exercise four times per week. And after that, remember to move every hour for at least five minutes. Second habit, eat a good breakfast and avoid having a late dinner. I don't have time to go into detail, but this is a very important habit. The most important nutritional habit, eat a good breakfast and avoid having a late dinner. Third, low consumption. I underline low consumption or abstinence, if you prefer, of animal, processed, refined, junk, fried, salty, sugary food and sweet drinks. Then you may ask, what shall we eat then? Here it is. High consumption of a variety of whole grains, nuts, fruits, seeds, sprouts, beans, tubers, cooked and raw vegetables, and pure water. Fifth important protective habit. Go to bed early and sleep eight to nine hours. Studies in the civil aviation has shown that the pilots who sleep at least nine hours per day, they do less mistakes in the moment to land the plane or to take fly. So how important is how important is when sleep determines and influence cognitive performance. Six habit overcome substance addictions or behavioral addictions. Are you dominated for internet games? Are you dominated by pornography, by internet? Behavioral addictions are dangerous as substance addictions. Try to overcome through psychological counseling, therapy. Look for professional help. Take care of your mental health by maintaining a positive attitude towards life and its challenges and managing stress appropriately. Chinese saying says, if you have a problem, why are you worried about it? If it, is have a, if it has a solution, don't worry anymore. And if it does not have a solution, don't worry anymore. 
it does not have a solution. Eight habit cultivate the spiritual dimension of life by practicing real trust in God. Do you practice the habit of knowing God every day by studying His Word, by praying to Him, by doing missionary work, by serving others in the name of God? What we have learned? The best protective habits against the pandemics of today and of the future. Physical activity according to your capacity. Early breakfast. Yes, late dinner, no. Eat very little, refined junk, fried, sweet, salty, and animal derived food. Eat a lot of grains, legumes, tubers, vegetables, seeds, salads, sprouts. Sleep early at least eight hours, nine better. Overcome addictions, maintain a positive attitude and control stress, and nurture trust in God. I want to finish with this fourth part. The change is on your family hands. I want to say something important. How does a person without risk factor change? If you don't have bad cholesterol high, if you don't have high blood pressure, if your waist is less than 88 centimeters if you are a woman or 102 centimeters less than that if you are a man then you may practice these eight habits i talked about in a progressive intelligent and pleasant way so you change to practice these good habits can be progressive little by little begin with the easiest and then you may go through the more complicated, a single behavior at a time, or two related behaviors. But what about a person with risk factors? How can change? If your waist is more than 88 centimeters, if you are a woman, or more than 102 centimeters, if you are a man, your change has to be fast, and total through health education or lifestyle medicine. You can take a picture to this link here. You may follow my class, Poder para Cambiar, Power to Change, for free in our Peruvian Union University. You are welcome to study this class in a free way, how to change those habits the physician indicated you that you needed to change. The change in the family takes place by giving example. How our children can learn to eat raw vegetables? By looking at us when we eat with joy in our hearts raw vegetables. Huh? They become delicious delicious after some time of consumption. Starting as early as possible. Let's begin to shape good habits, healthy habits in our children when they are little ones, when they are kids, by our example. Remember, if you and your family want to change one behavior at a time, don't try to change difficult behaviors. Begin with, easiest beha with easier behaviors, then you go for more complicated. One behavior at a time. And remember, reinforce. Give rewards to your family and to yourself when you achieve change. And remember, educate. Educate and educate. Pleasantly and intelligently. Two Bible texts to finish. If you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, the Lord will keep you free from every disease. Law depends on natural, spiritual, and moral laws. This does not mean that if we 
live according to the laws of God by the grace of Jesus and the power of the Spirit does not mean that we will never get sick. If we get sick, we will suffer less. And if we get sick more, we will have quality of life even when we are sick. We are recovered. We will recover easily. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. If you finish guilt for something, if your mental health has been lost, he is the one who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. He can give you abundant living in your physical health, mental health, spiritual health, and social health. May God bless you.